Today we are going to be rewriting Naruto the Last. However, I'd like to make it clear I am not allowed to change the ending of the movie. This movie must still lead to the conclusion of all the same characters getting together. I can only change how certain plot points are resolved and how we get there. The movie would open at the training ground where Team 7 received the bell tech with Naruto and Sakura discussing Sasuke's possible current whereabouts, wondering where he is and how they will get in touch with him if need be. We would then cut to Toneri conversing with Hiyashi with Hiyashi Hyuga and that entire plot line would take place the same. We would then pick up with Naruto and Sakura heading back into the village to meet up with Ino, Choji, Shikamaru, and Hinata for some ramen at Ichiraku. Upon arriving, they would make some casual conversation. Throughout the meal, we would see Naruto looking at Hinata, blushing slightly but looking away before she noticed it. Eventually, she would have to leave and Naruto himself would offer to walk her home without Sakura's encouragement. After walking home, they would eventually be approached by Toneri Otosuke. However, in this version of the story, another man by the name of Kitai Otosuke would kidnap Hanabi Hyuga while they were engaging in combat with Naruto Uzumaki. Upon realizing they were after Hinata, Naruto would enter his KCM-1 or QB Chakra mode and engage in combat with Toneri. Naruto would put up a decent fight but quickly realized he may need to use Biju mode. However, he would quickly dismiss the idea as he would not want to use that much power within the boundaries of the Hidden Leaf Village. Aside for Naruto being in KCM, the fight would be relatively the same. Soon, me and Kitai will be invincible when we have you, Hinata, and would then vanish into thin air. Naruto would tell Hinata he needs to leave immediately and speak with Sakura leaving Hinata very sad, jealous, and disappointed. Naruto would meet with Sakura and tell her of the events that just took place, and they would decide if the Otosuki are involved, they must need to contact Sasuke. The last Otosuki they fought was Kagoya, and if either one of these guys is nearly as strong as she is, they're going to need Sasuke's help to bring them down. As they, were, as they discussed ways to contact Sasuke, they would hear footsteps outside of Sakura's apartment and they would exit the apartment to find Sasuke at the door. He would go on to explain that he felt Naruto's use of the Nine-Tailed Chakra and assumed something was wrong if Naruto was using that level of power inside the Hidden Leaf Village. As they caught him up on the situation, an Anbu Black Ops member would arrive informing them of the kidnapping of Hanabi Hyuga. Upon arriving at Kachi's office, Naruto would immediately notice Hinata's presence and say hello, telling her he hoped she was okay and he was sorry about her sister. Higashi would then inform them that he would like Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura to deal with the threat of Toneri and Kitai Otosuke. He would also explain that due to Hanami being Hinata's sister, he was granting her request of attending the mission. However, she, she was under Naruto's protection if anything went wrong with the Otosuke. Their main method of transportation this time would be Sasuke's purpose Susano. They would eventually arrive in the same ancient city they did earlier and split off into two teams. Sakura and Sasuke and Naruto and Hinata. Naruto and Hinata would explore the city, going closer as they did. Naruto would be taking glances at Hinata all the time, blushing madly at the thought of being with her, thinking how beautiful he thought she was. They would eventually find themselves near the same pond at night where they would begin talking. Hinata would once more blame herself for Hinata's kidnapping, while Naruto would tell her he would save Hanabi no matter what. Eventually, Naruto would confess his feelings of love to Hinata. Before she could respond, Toneri would arrive, and Naruto would smirk, telling him they're not in the village anymore. He doesn't need to hold back, and he would enter Biju mode, his power glowing with the wrath of the Nine-Tailed Fox. We would then cut to Sakura and Sasuke looking up, they noticed Naruto would enter Biju mode. The chakra was all too familiar to them. But before Sake could say anything, Kitai Otosuke would appear before them. He would be in the Tensegon chakra mode. He would grab Sake, pu punching him through three buildings, as Sakura would charge him, attempting to punch him. But he would grab her fist and defeat her with ease. 
Sokka would charge him, his door coated in lightning, and they would engage in combat. As they fought, Naruto charging a Biju Dama, Rasen Shinigan at Toneri. He would be hit by the same green attack that he was hit with in the movie, knocking him into unconsciousness as he fell to the ground. His last word being, Hinata. No. Must save. Hinata. He would then cut to Sasuke and Sakura as they battled Kitai Ototsuki, who would, who would tell them that Toneri was done with his mission, and he would vanish into thin air. Sasuke would look at Sakura, grabbing her in his arms and activating his dojutsu. Using the might of the Rinnegan, he would teleport them both to Naruto's location, where Sakura would scream Naruto's name, noticing he had fallen. Sasuke would glare. How the how strong were these guys if Naruto had lost to them? His rival had been defeated. He would quit they would quickly go, and Sakura would heal Naruto's wounds, and he would begin to awaken minutes later. Once Naruto was awake, he would demand they go stay at Hinata, but, but and Sakura would try to convince him otherwise, but he would argue they had to go. Sake would Sake would strike him down, telling him he needed to focus. If he was going to be Hokage, he would need to be able to make tough choices. Right now they need to talk and figure out what to do and make a plan. They can't just go rushing in to save Hinata and Hanabi. Akage can't rush into things. Naruto would agree. If he wants to be Hokage, he needs to be smarter. Sake would reveal that during his travel, he discovered a possible connection between the Shuga clan and the stage of the Sith Plastic brother, Hamura Otosuke, and planning that Hamura's chakra would sometimes be reincarnated into two members of the Shuga clan at the same time, split in half. His Ying Chakra and his Yang Chakra, much like Naruto's former Kurama. He would explain that this must be the source of the Tenseigan Chakra Mode. Members of the Otosuke gained him the Akugan of the reincarnations of Hamura. He would then summarize that this Tenseigan Chakra Mode gave them a tremendous amount of power, and if both of them were able to reach it, they would each become incredibly powerful surpassing the tailed beast. Sakura would summarize that they had already taken Hinata's eye, which would infuriate Naruto. Hinata had beautiful eyes. How dare they take them. Sasuke would say he was going to go out and scout, while Sakura overlooked Naruto to make sure he was fully healed. Sakura would question Naruto, saying she had been noticing signs, asking him if he didn't love with Hinata. He would say yes, he did love her, and Sakura would reply, good. They would jokingly remember when they were kids, and Naruto used to have a crush on her. Naruto would say he used to have a bigger crush on her when he was a kid. A nice, childhood crush. Sakura would laugh, saying, to be honest, the crush was kind of annoying. And Naruto would agree. He was annoying. Sakura would tell him he still is. Sakura would return, agreeing with Sakura. Sa Naruto would get angry, telling Sakura only Sakura could call him annoying. And if Sakura did it again, he would kick his ass. Sake would retort, you could have kicked my ass if you wanted to, loser. Eventually it would be decided they would leave, but as they went to leave, Kitai Ozazuki would crash in front of them. He would claim the surgery was almost complete. Soon Toneri would have Hinata's eyes and they would be invincible. Sakura would demand to know Toneri's location. Kitai would respond, I guess I'll tell you, since you won't be living anyway, the moon. Sakura and Sake would laugh, telling him, won't be living. You have no idea how powerful the two of us actually are. And Sake would activate his Mangekyo Shiningan and his Rinnegan, while Sakura activated his Strength of a Hundred, and they would look to Naruto, telling him to go save Hinata. They both owed him a tremendous debt, so they would just see Kitai together, while he saved Hinata. Sakura would tell him, I know you can stop, Toneri. And Sake would simply nod in his direction. Naruto would enter Sith Path save mode, truth seeking orbs appearing behind his back, and he would fly toward the moon at speeds most shinobi could never hope to reach. We would see Sakura and Sake attack Kitai, Kitai easily blasting Sakura away, though he would quickly realize it was an illusion, a trick, a genjitsu. Sakura would actually be behind him, slamming her fist into his gut, destroying his abdomen as Sake stubbing a massive kidney, dropping it on his head. The two would, he would get up, his wounds healing, commenting, but two of them were strong. Sake was the strongest. He would comment how Sake had Indra's chakra, yes, 
the chakra of the Sage's son. Sakura and Sasuke would battle him for a long time before Sakura had an idea. Sasuke would shake his head. No, that was something Naruto would do. It was stupid and idealistic, and he wouldn't believe in it working. But Sakura would beg him. On the verge of tears, they may not be able to win this fight if they didn't try everything. Sasuke would eventually agree. Kitai was strong. He couldn't defeat Kitai easily without pulling out the Indra's arrow and leveling the entire area. So he would agree, and he would summon his purpose to Sano, and, and Sakura would meet, would stand next to him in the head, while she would coat it in the markings of strength of a hundred. They would link the fingers of their hands together as the Susanoo's right arm would coat it in blue, powerful chakra. The Susanoo would swing forward, hitting Kitai with a chakra-enhanced Susano punch, leveling countless miles of earth. Easily one of the most powerful attacks in Shinobi history, rivaling the swing of Madara's Susano sword. He would cut to Naruto landing on the moon in his full Sith Path save mode, holding nothing back, having borrowed chakra from the other tail beast to his mental link. He would throw a super tail beast bomb Ross and Shuriken, nine of them, at Toneri who would avoid the attack now fully guarded in his Dagon chakra mode. Uh, quickly realizing he would need help, Naruto would go to Hinata, telling her, let's finish this fight together, and he would place his hands over her eyes, growing her a new pair of eyes with his Sith Path power. He would tell her those eyes are temporary. Even though they are Byakugan, they would only last as long as he remained in Sith Path save mode. She would nod, saying they would have to finish this fight before he ran out of chakra then and they would engage in combat with Toneri. Toneri would be dealing with Hinata rather easily, while Naruto would throw massive levels of Sith Path level Senjutsu at Toneri, who would be blown away by the power Naruto commanded, stating, if Naruto and Sasuke had been together, they would have had no hope. In fact, he would theorize that Sasuke had been holding back this entire time. Naruto would agree that he and Sasuke were both holding back. Even in the most powerful state, they were barely using a fraction of their power. Toneri would talk about how he would kill Hinata, and Naruto would snap. He would unlock his full strength, easily defeating, easily blowing Toneri away. Hinata would grab his hand, transferring all of her chakra into him. And Naruto would glow with greenish chakra, the chakra of Hamura. He would then transform into the three-headed Kurama avatar he used against Sasuke and form two Biju Dama Rasen Shuriken that were glowing with green light. Throwing them forward, Toneri would be blown away at the power Naruto commanded. He would wonder what would Naruto and Sasuke be capable of together? What were the sage's children like? What was Hamura like? What were the sage like? Would they dislike the outcome he had decided, and he would be blown away, dying. He tried to achieve unlimited power, so he was stopped by those that worked for it. The explosion from Naruto Bijudama Rasen Shuriken that he threw from his three-headed Kurama avatar would blow Hinata and Naruto out of the moon gravity, back toward the earth. As they fell, they would grab each other's hand, and they would kiss. Naruto and Hinata would proclaim their love for each other, and as they landed, we would cut to Sasuke and Sakura. Sasuke simply telling Sakura, good job, you're not that annoying after all. Sakura would smile, knowing that was the most she would get out of Sasuke, especially with the possibility of Naruto arriving back at any moment. They would then head over to Naruto, meeting up with them and Naruto and Hinata would tell them they were together. We would cut to a few months later, Sakura attending Naruto and Hinata's wedding. They would party for, for a while, and Naruto and Hinata would stay their vow. Naruto would finally have a family, and everybody he had ever bonded with would congratulate him on this. However, Sakura would then gesture for him to come over there, and she would ask him to walk with her. They would walk to a village gate, where, where Naruto would finally have his eyes widen and realize what was happening. He would smile, congratulating her, as she smiled back, telling him thank you. He would jokingly tell her, if anything pervy happens, he gets to be the godfather. She would, she, she would scream, telling him you don't say things like that to a lady, punching him. She would then hug him, saying goodbye. And then he would then look up to see Sasuke in the distance, 
nodding to him. Naruto would look back. No words were needed between him and Sasuke. That's just how close the two of them were. That was how strong their bond was. Naruto would simply say, take care of yourself. He's a jackass, after all. Sakura would laugh, telling him, I'll, I'll look for a reason for Yushu to fight again. I know you want that. And he would smile, thanking her. And Sasuke would laugh, slightly to himself, muttering, I could kick your ass any day. Sakura would turn, walking with Sasuke, and they would nod, jumping into the trees, leaving Naruto behind. Naruto would sigh, putting his hands in his pocket, walking towards his apartment. He would open the door. Then he would remember something. This time, somebody was there. There was no big romantic moment. No kiss, no hug. Nothing was exchanged between Naruto and Hinata as they stared into each other's eyes beside one word. Welcome home, dear. Welcome home. And that is how I would do the last. Make it a final Naruto story about Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, but Naruto's major character arc and Naruto's problem involved the relationship with Hinata. The struggle Naruto must overcome is a romantic relationship with Hinata, but Sakura and Sasuke are there just like they always have been, going through their own story arcs, growing in character and having epic moments. It would end with Team 7. It would end their character arc amazingly. And then, at the very end, Naruto would arrive home, and he would finally have somebody waiting there for him, which he had never had before. And I think that would just be the perfect ending, a first-person shot of Naruto opening the door. He walked in, and he got us there. But that is how I would do the last, if I was doing it. And mind you, I know I didn't get to go into great detail on the fighting, but I didn't want to. And a lot of the Naruhina stuff would stay the same. It mostly about how the movie ended, the fighting, the power scaling, and all of that. Well, you guys enjoy. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe for more videos. It's a One Peak Nation, signing out. Have a great day, guys.